What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with another fractions lesson. Today, we're going to be talking about subtracting fractions with like denominators. So let's split it open and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to subtract fractions by using my fraction knowledge. So just to review really quickly, because this is the same knowledge we're going to be using today, when I add fractions, my denominators have to be the same, so they're both 8. And when you add fractions, you add the numerators, right? So 4 plus 7 is 11, and then your denominator stays the same. And that's the same knowledge you're going to be using today. My answer is 11 eighths. That's an improper fraction, which means it's bigger than 1, right? An improper fraction is greater than 1 whole. So I'm going to use my big 1 number bonds to decompose this fraction. So I'm going to take out 8 eighths, and 8 eighths is equivalent to one whole, which is why I draw a 1 around it, even though it looks like a rectangle. And then I would have 3 eighths left. And let me just double check. 8 plus 3 is 11. My denominator is 8. And so my mixed number is one whole, right, because I pulled out one whole, with 3 eighths left over. So 4 eighths plus 7 eighths equals 11 eighths, or 1 and 3 eighths. That is the same knowledge you're going to be using today to subtract fractions. Again, fraction rule number two, not going to be applicable today because all the denominators will be the same, but you will see this in the future and it's just good to note when adding and subtracting fractions, the denominators have to be the same, all right? Let's take a look at what's actually happening when we're subtracting fractions, okay? When you subtract fractions, just like when you add fractions, the denominators don't change. Well, why not? So here we have a pizza, and it says Danielle had seven-eighths of a pizza, right? So split into eight pieces, and she has seven-eighths of them left. Maybe her dog ate that one. Who knows? For breakfast, she ate three-eighths. How much pizza does she have left? Or the question might even say, what fraction of the pizza does she have left? So if I eat three-eighths, that means I'm going to eat three of my eight total pieces that I had to begin with. So that's one. Take away two and then take away the third one. And what did I have left? I had four eights left. So just like when you were adding, we could set this up and we're gonna get back to this. This is the algorithm. I had seven eights, I subtracted three eights. So I have four pieces left, but you can see my denominator never changed, right? There were still eight total pieces in my one whole. So that never changed, just change how much I had left. And so my answer would be four eights. And if you look at this, you can actually simplify this to one half and you can visually see this this looks like it is one half of the pizza left so four eighths or simplified one half but again what we want you to take from this is when you subtract fractions your denominators don't change and this is exactly why we just subtracted the numerators the total amount of pieces that made up my one whole never changed so there are three ways that we can subtract fractions, and they're very similar to, actually they're the exact same, as the three ways that we used in our video for adding fractions. Number one, you can use area models. You just saw me do that with the pizza, right? Number two, you can use number lines. And number three, you can use the algorithm, which again, I just showed you on our previous problem. So let's dive in to using the area models first. Okay, so it says, let's subtract these fractions using an area model. So I'm starting with 8 fourths. So let's say I have two Hershey bars, and I've split them into four equal pieces each. So my denominator is 4, right? And that goes back to knowing what a fraction is. Your denominator is how many total pieces that one whole is split into. So this is split into 4, and this is split into 4. So my denominator is 4. Now, I have eight total pieces shaded in, so I'm starting with eight fourths, and then I want to subtract three fourths from that. Let's say I broke off three fourths and gave it to a friend because we're making s'mores around the campfire. Who knows, okay? I like to tell stories with my math. So again, if you notice, my denominator didn't change, right? Each hole is still split into four pieces, but I only have one, two, three, four, five pieces left, and so my answer has to be five fourths, or I have one entire whole, and then one-fourth of another one. So this is an improper fraction, means it's greater than one. So I can do five-fourths or one and one-fourth. So this is subtracting using an area model. And again, I checked it down here with the algorithm, just showing you the math that I did as I was subtracting these. Let's take a look at the number line now. So here's a number line, and we want to do seven-eighths minus two-eighths minus one-eighth. 
So I'm going to use a number line. And first of all, whenever I come to a number line, I need to circle my whole numbers. That helps me know that I need eight pieces in between zero and one. And again, not eight lines, eight spaces. So let's just double check. I have one space, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight spaces in between zero and one. So my denominator is correct. Let me recircle these in red. Okay. And so now I just want to label it. So I have zero. My first piece would be one out of eight, then two out of eight, three eighths, four eighths. You could also, I'm just going to go ahead and write one half up here because four eighths is one half. Knowing that benchmark fraction of one half is super important if you want to make fractions easy. And then this would be one whole or eight eighths. Okay, that's my big one right here. Eight eighths is the same thing as one whole. Now I'm starting at seven eighths. So I'm going to go seven eighths and I'm going to just put a big dot. You could use arrow, whatever you want. I'm going to subtract two eighths. So I'm going to go backwards. One, two eighths, right? So that's taking away two eighths. Now I'm at five eighths and then I want to do another one eighth, right? So I just subtracted one eighth. And when you look at that, I have now landed at four eighths, which again, we can simplify to one half. But don't worry about simplifying if you're not there. This is all about just subtracting. And if you look at this, 7 minus 2 is 5, minus 1 is 4. So that's how we do it on a number line. You can also see down here, I checked it using the algorithm. So let's get into that because I think you're going to find that a little bit quicker. And most of you are probably going to want to use that. So our algorithm, very simple. If the denominators are the same, which they will be in this video, all we have to do is subtract the numerators. So 3 minus 2 is 1, and my denominator stays the same. So 3 fifths minus 2 fifths is 1 fifth. Same thing right here. Okay, now my denominators are all 8, so that's good. So 5 minus 1 is 4, minus 1 is 3. So 5 eighths minus 1 eighths minus 1 eighth would be 3 eighths. You could also just combine these to do 2 eighths, right? And use your number knowledge and your number sense to just say 5 minus 2 eighths, which is still 3 eighths. So you can do this a lot of different ways, just using the same skills that you always have used with whole numbers. Okay, and then now we're starting with an improper fraction, which again is just a fraction greater than one. So seven fourths minus two fourths, it doesn't matter. My denominators are the same, which means I can subtract these. Seven minus two is five fourths. So five fourths, again, is an improper fraction. It's a fraction greater than one. So I'm going to also write the mixed number by decomposing this, taking out my big one of four fourths, okay, which leaves me with one fourth left over. So four fourths plus one fourth would be five fourths, just to double check my math. So I could either write five fourths or the mixed number that's the same thing as five fourths is one whole and one fourth. Check out our video on turning improper fractions to mixed numbers if you need a little help with that skill right there. But that's the algorithm, very simple. Very easy, very quick, just using our whole number subtraction knowledge to help us subtract fractions. All right, let's try this you try problem. Go ahead, you're going to pause the video, you're going to uh, solve it, and then push play to check your understanding. So hopefully you just paused it and solved it. Our question said, what is the value of n? So n is just a variable, kind of like a blank. And I'm just going to go ahead and solve this with the algorithm because I think it's super quick. My denominators are already the same, so I know that n... My denominator is going to be 12. 6 minus 4 is 2. So my answer is 2 twelfths. Or you could even simplify that to 1 6. But again, don't worry if you don't know how to simplify yet. You can check out our song and video for that. You can check it out in the cards right here. But that's how we do the algorithm for fractions, right? Very simple. We keep the denominator the same. We subtract the numerators. Hopefully this has been very helpful to you. You've seen subtracting fractions three different ways, using the ARI model, using the number line, using the algorithm. It's good to practice all three of them, but pick the strategy that works for you the best. Thank you so much. Check out all our other fraction videos. We appreciate you watching and learning with us today. We hope you'll subscribe, like, comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Again, thank you so much. Instruct Beats, out.